Next, we have the brother and sister act of Rowie and Ronnie Fishman, and uh, they're going to create effective edibles and give a cannabis food demonstration. Thank you. Rowie. Thank you, Moses. And so Ronnie. I know we're all excited to get going with the cooking demonstration, but before we get going, we're just gonna start before Ronnie gets out, just to talk about Please. why we're here at Idea City doing a cooking demonstration and why it's so important. So if you will, I wanna walk you through an imagination. I want you to picture yourself going into the LCBO or any alcohol retailer, hundreds if not thousands of products on the shelves. You make a beeline straight for the wine. You then decide, I wanna drink something red. And after that, you decide, you know what, I'm in the mood for California. And from there, you make another decision to drink Cabernet. All of a sudden, in 30 seconds, you have narrowed down the product selection from hundreds, if not thousands, of SKUs to maybe a handful. And then you make a decision you know, based on experience, based on the label, whatever it is, and you choose the bottle of wine that suits your taste, that suits the experience that you want. Now I want you to imagine that same thing, but with cannabis. Somewhat homogenized product, limited branding, limited advertising, and limited support in many of the retail locations. How can that person, on day one of legalization, October 17th, make that decision? And how can we help them? Well, before I can talk about how we can empower that person to make the decision, let's find out who is that person? Who's consuming cannabis and why? Deloitte's most recent report said the most typical cannabis consumer in Canada is 18 to 35. They're a risk taker, and they consume cannabis multiple times per week. I don't dispute that, but I will say that tomorrow's cannabis consumer is much different, and I don't want the stigma of that to say to a tomorrow's cannabis consumer that cannabis isn't for you. I think tomorrow's cannabis consumer is more like this. It's an older, more conservative person who maybe had tried cannabis in their youth and is interested in coming back now that it's legal. I think that if we look at the United States as a case study, at the legalized adult use markets, we're seeing two very exciting things. First, that the fastest growing demographic of cannabis users are 50 plus. Two, that men and women are consuming cannabis equally, and we can't think of the stereotype that I did of today's cannabis consumer, because as products move downstream towards edibles and beverages and skincare products, women will drive consumption in that industry. So we have to keep in mind who is tomorrow's cannabis consumer and what motivates them. Oh, you see, even Mrs. Jones wants an edible. <laughs> so what motivates tomorrow's cannabis consumer? Really simply, Two-thirds of people use cannabis for four things. To relax, to sleep, to reduce anxiety, and to reduce stress. And 50% of cannabis users are using cannabis to improve mood. So what does that mean? I think it means that you could sum it up in one sentence. The majority of people who use cannabis are using it to improve a quality of life. Whether you're coming from a medical market saying, I want an alternative to, a f to traditional pharma or an opiate, or you're coming from the recreational side saying, you know, I want a different altered experience than alcohol can offer, I think really the majority of tomorrow's cannabis consumer will be looking at this therapeutically. We get this question a lot from a lot of our patients and a lot of our readers, and they say, oh my God, that sounds so interesting. Cannabis can improve my quality of life? Sounds interesting, but I just don't know enough. Where do I start? And I think it, the onus is on us as cannabis companies to fix this information imbalance, to help educate people, to make sure that they're finding the right product. When they go on day one of legalization and they need to make that decision to get to the California Cabernet out of the thousands of products or hundreds, whatever it is in the retail, how can we empower them to find the right product, to find something that will fit within their healthy cannabis lifestyle? I think it's simple and I think we've seen it before. I think we need to build trust through education. Yeah, because there ain't no party like a cannabis party. 
So, so in an era where Facebook and Google and YouTube and Instagram aren't allowing cannabis companies to promote their products, how can we communicate the, the message that a product has? How can we deliver that message saying, this is the experience that's right for you? And I, I think it's simple. I think you put trusted people who are communicating safe and reliable information directly building a relationship with an interested person in that target market. And once they understand and say, wow, that product is great, they go and tell their friends. And then when they go on legalization day or thereafter, they can find a product that's right for them. Now, this really builds into a very simple education hypothesis, that if you can educate, you can build trust and reduce stigma. And by doing so, maybe that person will be driven to buy your brand. So, as a key takeaway, before we see Chef Ronnie blow our minds with an amazing cannabis culinary class, I'd like to say two things. One is that education reduces barriers for tomorrow's cannabis consumer. And two is that food can be a universal language to reduce these barriers and reduce the stigma around cannabis. So without further ado, let's welcome Chef Ronnie. Thank you. By show of hands, who here has had a negative experience with an edible? Like, I for sure have. Who here is too scared to try an edible because they've heard those horror stories about those, like, incredibly potent brownies that just knock you off your feet? Right? I've definitely tried one of those brownies, and it turned me off edibles for a while. But I went back to cooking with cannabis because I wanted to find a healthy alternative to smoking, right? If I'm using it as a medication, why would I then add smoke? I want to do something healthy. What I want to do is I want to tear down this idea that an edible needs to be an extremely potent brownie or a square of a chocolate bar or a gummy bear. I'm a full person. I need a full meal. I don't remember the last time I stopped at just one gummy bear. I need the whole bag. <laughs> My approach to cooking with cannabis is really simple. I think that you should approach cannabis as an ingredient rather than a psychoactive additive, which it is. But if you highlight the ingredient, you're able to really have an incredibly tasting uh, edible that complements the food you're combining it with. An edible doesn't have to be these brownies, doesn't have to be these baked goods. It can be a salad dressing. It can be a chimichurri that you rub on your steak or on your chicken. It can even be a smoothie that you ingest in the morning. It's really limitless, and it's so easy to incorporate it into a healthy, balanced lifestyle. And today, I'm going to show you how to do that. What I'm going to show you today is how to infuse cannabis into an olive oil. And then we're going to take that olive oil, and we are going to make the most epic avocado toast you have ever seen. And we are going to top it with an even more epic spicy tuna tartare. The first step to cooking with cannabis is choosing your strain. There are three things I look at when I choose a strain. The first is, what is my desired effect? For me right now, I'm looking for something that I can ingest at night that's going to help me fall asleep, and it's going to keep me asleep. So that's why I chose this strain. Next, I look at the potency. What is the dose you're looking for? I am looking, for me, I like 10 milligrams. So I chose this strain because I know with my recipe, I'm going to get a 10 milligram dose per tablespoon. And lastly, what I look at are the flavors and aromas, which are called the terpenes. So I chose a strain uh, that is high in caryophylline. Caryophylline is uh, a terpene that's also found in black pepper. Now, you probably can't smell it out there. <laughs> Moses, can I pass it around? <laughs> He's nodding his head, sure. Someone want to take it? No. Perfect. Uh, so you want to pair those natural terpenes that are found in the strains with the natural terpenes that are found in the recipe you want to create. So this one, 
the pepperiness is really coming through and that's gonna pair so well with the spiciness of the sriracha that I'm gonna put on the avocado toast and the citrus of the lime juice. It's really gonna go well. And I also get tons of herbaceous notes like parsley and cilantro in here that are gonna go really well and you're not gonna need to use those extra herbs because it's already, the flavor's already in your cannabis. How cool is that? The next step to cooking with cannabis is decarboxylation. What that means is that you toast it at around 240 degrees for 40 minutes, and what it does is it activates the cannabinoids, so you're able to feel the full effect of the cannabis. So, in order to decarboxylate, what you do is you break up your cannabis. I prefer to use my hands, because that way I'm able to control the size a little better. You can use a hand grinder, but I suggest not using um, anything too fine because you don't want the little pieces of cannabis um, passing through your uh, strainer because that way you're gonna have a really bad tasting edible that has that chlorophyll plant-like taste to it um, that I'm sure a lot of you have tried in, in one of those mystery brownies. So the next step is putting it in the oven. So like I said, you put it in the oven at 240 degrees for 40 minutes. You want to check on it frequently, give it a shake so that it doesn't burn. This was the quickest 45 minutes of my life. We have our decarbed cannabis all ready to go. Like, I don't know if you can see that, it's slightly darker in color. It's definitely a lot more fragrant. And now we're ready to start cooking with the cannabis. So what you want to do next is choose the fat that you want to infuse. Today I'm using olive oil, but you can use butter, you can use coconut oil, you can use uh, ghee, you can even use things like honey and maple syrup. Um, it's really endless, your choices. But for today, we're going to be doing olive oil. I really close this tight. So I have a cup of olive oil here. I'm going to pour my decarbed cannabis directly into the heat-proof mason jar. It's important that it's heat-proof because I'm going to be cooking it directly in the mason jar. I'm going to seal it. I'm so excited. <laughs> and I'm going to cook it in a water bath. The reason I cook it in a water bath is I'm able to um, have a more consistent edible. If you have a crock pot or a sous vide, it's the same method. As long as you're able to keep a consistent temperature, and we never want to let this go over 385 degrees. So to be safe, I always set it to 365 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is going to cook for three and a half hours, and then we're going to be ready to cook. So that all depends on, on the dosage you're looking for. For this strain and the amount of THC in it, I use three and a half grams for one cup of olive oil. So, Three and a half hours have gone by. I mean, time flies when you're having fun, right? And now we have our cannabis oil ready to be strained. I don't know if you can see, it's gotten slightly darker in color. It's super fragrant. I can smell the notes of the pepper and the herbs. All those terpenes are coming through beautifully. So now the next step is to strain it. So you want to grab a fine mesh strainer and you want to layer it with some cheesecloth. I'm just going to pour it directly in there. Perfect. Now I don't want to wring it out too tightly because I don't want that chlorophyll taste that I mentioned earlier. So I'm just going to let gravity sort of do the work here. Perfect. All set. Just going to put this to the side. So now your next step is putting it in a jar that can now, you know, conserve your product. The most important part here is to label it. So I would label that this is, like I mentioned, 10 milligrams uh, per tablespoon dose. And you want to make sure that you're storing it somewhere far away from kids, um, somewhere that pets can't get into, 
or if your friend comes over, opens your fridge, isn't going to get a mystery surprise an hour and a half later. <laughs> Unless that's what you want. <laughs> All right, so now we have our oil. You don't just have to cook with it. It can be used as an exfoliant if you mix it with bath salts. You can make suppositories with it. Um, I use it as a moisturizer. Uh, the ways you can incorporate this into your lifestyle are limitless, um, and it, it's so good for you as well. So now we're going to make our avocado toast. The first step to making this avocado toast is getting our avocado ready. So what I have here is some diced avocado. I am going to add some lemon juice. I'm just going to wring it out. This table's a little short. I feel very tall. <laughs> So I'm going to put some lime juice. The amount of lime juice is a personal preference. I like things highly acidic, so I'm going to add half a lime in here. Then I'm going to add a pinch of salt. Now when a chef tells you a pinch of salt, I mean a handful. <laughs> and last but not least, we're going to add our infused olive oil. So I want a 10 milligram dose, which is one tablespoon of this. But for a beginner, I always suggest starting slow. Five milligrams is a great place to start. And if you don't feel it, make sure you're waiting a full hour and a half before you ingest any more. Always remember, can't ingest too much. Willie Nelson's still kicking around. <laughs> so I'm going to add my infused olive oil. This smells so good, guys. I'm so hungry already. I'm going to give it a good mix and then a taste. If you don't put love in your food, it doesn't taste good. My mom taught me that. All right, I'm just going to give it a quick taste. All right, that's exactly what I want it to be. A little sour from the lime, but a little peppery from the infused olive oil. Next up, our tuna. So I have finely diced tuna in a really cold bowl here. I'm going to add a shallot. So the way you cut a shallot, I'm going to cut it in half. You want to keep the core intact, and you're going to run your knife in, this, in the width of the dice that you're looking for. And then I'm going to run it the other way, perpendicular to it. And then I'm just going to simply run my knife through it. And just like that, you have a perfectly diced shallot. I'm only going to put half of it in here. And the shallot's really going to complement um, really that infused olive oil because it, it has a bit of that pepperiness in it as well. Next up, pinch of salt and hot sauce. I never go anywhere without hot sauce. So this is a homemade sriracha, but feel free to use whichever, whichever hot sauce that you prefer. And then I'm just going to finish this off with a little bit of regular olive oil. You can always infuse this a little bit more, but I want to stick to my 10 milligrams, so I'm just going to put a drizzle of a really nice olive oil, give it a mix, and give it a taste, and then we're ready to eat. That's incredible. I'm always so surprised with how good my food is. <laughs> so now we're ready to build our toast. So what you want to do, I've, I've already toasted these a little bit. I took two slices of bread like you would have a normal sandwich, but I like to make things look a little bit more elegant because when it looks good, it tastes better to me. So first thing, top your avocado. It's all good. It's not fun unless it's a little bit messy, right? With this avocado, I actually left it um, a little bit chunky. I don't like to puree it too much. I really like the texture when you bite into it and you get those pops of avocado. So that's going to go on there. Just got to make sure it's spread really nicely. Perfect. Now I'm going to top it with that beautiful Spicy tuna. Who's excited? I'm definitely excited. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, who else can say that their avocado toast is gonna help their back pain or gonna help them sleep tonight? I think that's so cool. And that's why I love cooking with cannabis, honestly. So now we layered our tuna. We're gonna finish it off with chives. Chives, again, have that oniony taste to it, which is gonna pair so well with the pepperiness and the herbaceousness of the strain we chose. We're just gonna get messy here. You gotta sprinkle it everywhere. Got some love on there. Salt bay it, if you really want. <laughs> I got a few laughs out of that. That's all I need. That's it, and then you plate it. I am going to garnish it with half of a lime and the cutest little hot sauce bottle you've ever seen in your life. And that's it, that's as simple as it can be. Cooking with cannabis is so easy and it's so beneficial in so many ways and it's a healthy alternative to consume cannabis, right? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Just to finish up, I'm Ronnie Fishman. I am the culinary director of uh, Carmel Cannabis and I love cooking with cannabis and I think you will too. Thank you so much.